Welcome to It's Your Case, presented by VetCT.com. I'm Amy Zaltzman, your radiologist on demand for this week. We continue this month's theme of the gastrointestinal tract. Today's case is a 1.5-year-old female spade Labrador retriever who presents for a few days history of vomiting and rapid weight loss over the past month. We have concern for dietary indiscretion because, come on, she's a lab, and eating things off the ground. No recent, she has no recent exposure to toxins and has recently tested twice negative for Lyme disease. She has a history of a histiocytoma that resolved with doxycycline treatment and has no other medications. In this exam, we get great benefit from using a left lateral view as well as a right lateral view. The gastric silhouette is moderately distended with gas and soft tissue. On the right lateral view, the gas cap is in the fundus of the stomach, and on the left lateral view, the gas distributes a little bit to the region of the pyloric antrum and then also out through a moderately distended proximal duodenum. The moderately descended proximal duodenum is poorly defined beyond the point where it becomes more uniformly soft tissue opaque. Between the right and left lateral views, we consistently see a moderately distended segment of small intestine in the proximally in the in the mid to cranial abdomen. It terminates or it begins to taper at a minerally opaque structure that is inconsistent with normal ingesta that has a uniformly thick wall and centrally has both heterogeneous mineral and fat opaque material and this structure has a uniform appearance between both lateral views. It's also very consistent in its location in the cranioventral abdomen. On the ventrodorsal view, we don't see this structure particularly well until we start to inspect the region adjacent to the vertebral column at the level of T13L1. And in this area, we see it correspond to the region where we would anticipate the transverse colon. However, on the lateral views, this structure is fairly ventral to where we would anticipate the transverse colon. So if we construct the abdomen in our mind's eye, this would still place the structure in the region of small intestine. The remaining small intestine is relatively narrow in diameter, so it's pretty empty, and either contains a small volume of gas or is more uniformly soft tissue opaque, which could either be empty and flat or a small volume of fluid. The descending colon and rectum contains predominantly gas. The two populations of small intestine and small intestinal morphology would then be consistent with intraluminal foreign material with secondary mechanical obstruction. So the radiopaque foreign material that we've identified with adjacent segments of distension is very strongly concerning for mechanical obstruction. And the segment containing the material with the associated distended segment does not follow the typical course of the colon. Given the rapid weight loss, partial obstruction with now complete obstruction would be strongly suspected. The foreign material could represent something like a nut or a foam-filled ball, which might have initially functioned like a ball valve where it could potentially rotate and allow some food to have passed and now has completely turned such that no food is able to pass and now completely obstructed. Determination of appropriate interventions, whether it's medical management or surgical intervention, is a clinical discussion. Be sure to view the full report associated with this case. Thank you for listening, and remember, it's your case, so please post your questions on social media.